Hi everyone. Today we will learn about finite automata with outputs. In the previous lectures we have seen the finite automata which we are considering to give the binary or outputs. Binary outputs I mean we are only concerning that the automata will accept the string or will not accept the string and the acceptability was decided on the basis of reachability from the starting state to the final state. Now here we will see the automata which gives more outputs. So we have automata with outputs that are given by two mathematician Mille and Moore. Actually Mille proposed this Mille model in the year 1955 and then in the year 1956 E.F. Moore proposed the model that, that is called Moore model and later it was identified that actually both the models are the different structure of a similar machine and later it is also found that it is possible to transform one machine to other. So in this lecture we will see what is finite automata with outputs, we will see the structure of Miele machine, we will try to understand the structure of Moore machine and then we will also learn how to transform from Miele to Moore and from Moore to Miele machines. We will try to understand with this while taking one example. So we will move to the next slide. So Miele machine is defined as the value of the output function zt in the most general case is a function of the present state qt and the present input xt. So basically if we talk of the machine with outputs they, dif they are differing from the normal final automata with this output column. So we have one more function output function that is defined by lambda and the value of the output function zt is given by lambda qt xt where qt is referring to any state and xt is any input. So for the for one state and the input we are getting the output. This is the Miele machine. In the Moore machine we can see that the lambda function and the value of the lambda function zt is defined by qt. This is a major difference between the Moore machine and Miele machine that the output value is defined by the state and the input value in, in the case of Miele machine but in Moore machine the output value is defined purely on the state only. So here is the formal definition of Moore machine. If you remember we have seen that the finite automata is defined by a quintuple or we have seen that in the definition of finite automata it contains five elements. Here in Moore machine it is defined as a six tuple that is it contains the six elements which is q it's a finite set of states sigma it's a input alphabet set delta is the output alphabet transition function that is from state to input we get to one state here we have lambda the output function that is mapping from state to an alphabet and q0 is the initial state 
So if you see all the six elements, we will see here that Q, Sigma, Delta and Q0. These are the same which we have seen in finite automata. The two things which differ is this Delta output alphabet and the output function which is actually a mapping of a state to a output to an alphabet value. So we'll try to understand with the help of this table. This is a table which is defining the Murray machine. So if we look into this table, we can easily find that this table basically, if you look into this part, this part we have seen up to now. In the finite automata, we have the states and when we provide any input, we will get the state. So the transition in the finite automata is defining as Q cross input, we are reaching to some state. Now in the Mure machine, we have one extra column, that is the output column. So let us first try to understand how the moves or the transitions are made in the Mori machine. So let us suppose we have the input string 0, 1, 1, 1. If you want to read this string using this Mori machine, then how I can read? We we'll start from the starting state that is the Q0. So from Q0, I read 0 and I reach to Q3. I reach to Q3. From Q3, I read 0. From Q3, I read 0. I reach to just a minute. I think there is a mistake here. From Q3, now already we have read it, we have already see, very sorry, very sorry, I, I am reading the wrong string, actually I have to read 0, 1, 1, 1, fine, so again I will do, first I will read 0, so from Q0, when I read 0, I reach to Q3, now the next character is 1, so from Q3, when I read 1, so I reach to Q0, now from Q0, I read 1, I reach to Q1. Now the last character is from Q1, when I read 1, I reach to Q2. So this is how actually the transition happens in Mure machine. Now when it comes to output, we will see for Q0, the output is 0. For Q3, the output is 1. For Q0, the output is 0. Q1 the output is 1, for Q2 the output is 0. So for this input, we get the output 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. This is the output for this input. So here we can see that for a string of length n, we are getting the string of length n plus 1. Here in our case, the input length is 4 and the output length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, this is a general behavior of the Mori machine for a string of length n, the output is of length n plus 1. So, this is the one important point. The second input, uh, the second important point is that the first output is lambda q0 for all output string. The meaning of this statement is that here the epsilon input is defined. Means when we input a string of length 0 or epsilon string, the output will be the output of the starting state. So here if I input the epsilon or any string of length 0, the output is 0. Also, if the string length is 0, the output length is 1. So, as a rule, we can say that uh, for an input string epsilon, 
the output is the lambda q0 the output of the starting state so in this case we have 0 now let us try to understand the miller machine here again the miller machine is is a six tuple this is a miller machine so the miller machine is a six tuple which is defined by the same like previous Bure machine if you see the Bure machine here also we see there are six tuples also we find the same symbols all are same the only difference is in the condition function the only difference is in this the rest all is same this is the finite set of state this is set of input alphabets this is the output alphabet the transition function and lambda is the output function mapping q0 is the initial state so this is the only difference that is the output function if you notice that in the more machine the output is defined by for each q we are getting the output but here for each q and the input symbol we are getting the output this is the first difference between the Miller machine and the Murray machine the second difference in Miller and Murray machine is that that Miller machine does not define for epsilon or a string of length 0 If the epsilon is the input, the output is nothing. It will return epsilon only. Let us take an example. This is the Miller machine. So if you see the structure, here we have, here I told you that in the only difference is the output function. For each input and the state, we are getting the output. So for each state, and the input we are getting the output this is the state and the output for the input a0 for the input a1 so now let us try to read this string 0011 how it is to be traversed or how the moves can be done in the Miller machine so from q1 if i read 0 q1 if i read 0 I will reach to Q3 and the output is 0. I will write it 0 here. Now from Q3, if I read 0, from Q3, if I write 0, I reach to Q2. Output is 1. Now from Q2, if I read 1, from Q2, if I read 1, I reach to Q4. Output is 0. Now from Q4, if I read 0, I reach, if I read 1, because the string given is 0, 0, 1, 1. So from Q4, if I read 1, I reach to Q3 and the output is 0. So for this input, the output which we get is Q0, 1, 0, 0. This is the output. We will not consider the output for the starting state. This is the only difference in the Murray machine. We have also taken the output for the starting state. So here we notice that the input string is of length n, the output string is of also length n. So in general we can say if we input the string of length n, the output string will be of the same length n. And the other difference, important difference, that for the input string epsilon, the output string is only epsilon. Again, I want to recall that in the Murray machine, for the epsilon input, we are getting the output of the starting state. So, let's say if this is the uh, Muller structure, so if we input epsilon, then we get the output of the this state, starting state. So, now we have seen the definition of Miller machine and Murray machine. Now we have understood the structure, how the moves are made in the Miller machine and Murray machine. 
what is the difference between the Mille and Mure machine. Now we'll try to convert Mille machine into Mure machine. Transforming a Mille machine into a Mure machine and a vice versa so that for a given input string, the output strings are the same except for the first symbol. This you will see in the example what is actually the meaning of this. So now what I am trying to do is I am trying to convert or to transform one machine into the other. So this is the melee machine given to us because we have the separate uh, state output, state output. This is the melee machine. Now the objective is to convert into the Mure machine. So we'll see the, the steps how to do it. Look into the next state column for any state, say QI, and determine the number of different outputs associated with QI in that column. The meaning of this is that while we are trying to convert into Mure machine, the first step is we will look into these rows. So row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4. So for each row, we will focus on this column output column. So actually what we are trying to find out is that we have to tr find out that the values, output values are same or different. So for the first row, values are same. So we will say OK. Now in second row, we will find that the values are not same. So here we have to put a mark. Here we have the same values so this is ok. In Q4 again we have a different values so we will put some mark here. That means this is what is required in step number 1. Second step is split QI into several different states the number of such states being equal to the number of different outputs associated with QI. The meaning of this step is go to the rows where you find the output are different. So here we find that Q2 and Q4 are the two rows where the outputs are different. So in the second step, now we have to split these two rows. We will split this Q2 into more rows. Now, how many rows? Since we are getting here two different outputs, 1 and 0, so we have to split this Q2 into two different rows. Now, this Q2 is further divided into the two different rows. Similarly, Q4 is also divided into two different rows. How many rows to be split it depends on the number of different values. Here we have only two values, so we are splitting into two rows. Let's say we have three different values. Let's say the alphabet set or the input uh, the sigma is defining 0, 1 and 2. And let us assume that all the three values are different. In that case, we have to split this row into three. Now we'll see the next step. So here we have seen that this Q1 remains the same but Q2 we have split it into two rows, Q3 remains same and Q4 is split it into two. Now the next step we have to see is if you look at Q1 we have Q2 entry here in Q1 row but since now there is no existence of Q2 because Q2 we have split it into Q2 0 and Q21. So now in place of Q2, we are adding two rows in place of Q2 that is Q20 and Q21. If you see here, now we, we don't have Q2, but we have Q20 and Q21. Now the question arises that in this row we have Q2. But Q2 we don't have now now Q2 we don't have in our uh, table. We have Q20 and Q21. That means now this particular value has to be replaced either with Q20 or with Q21. 
but not Q2 because Q2 has no existence now. Now how we decide this? It will be decided based on the output value. If this output is 0, then we will replace this as a Q2 0. Again I repeat that this particular entry will be defined on the basis of the output value. If it is 0, then we will make it as a Q2 0. Now we'll see here. So if you see in the first row Q3, now this Q2 is changed to Q2 0 because of this 0 output. Now, if you go to Q2, in Q2 we have Q1. Now no need to change because Q1 is already uh, a single row, not splitted. We will keep it as it is. Now Q4. Also we are going to split Q4 into Q40 and Q41. Means now we, we, we don't have the existence of Q40. Again we further need to replace this Q4 either with Q40 or Q41. Again the decision we will take on the basis of the output value. Since the, this is 0 so we are going to make it as Q40. This particular row which I have divided into Q21 and Q20, both the rows contain the same values. Both the rows contain the same values. So we look here into this table. So this is Q1. I think this is clear now. Now in Q20, we have this value Q11, Q40. Now this 0 comes because of this 0. Now these two rows I have replicated. One for the 2, 0 and 1 for the 2, 1. Now in Q3, in Q3 I have Q2. Again, this Q2 now it's not existence, so we have to need to replace either with Q2, 0 or Q2, 1. Since the output is 1, so we will replace this as a Q2, 1. So you can see here this is Q2, 1, 1, Q1, 1, and this Q4 is further expanded into the two rows. That is Q41, value is Q411, Q30. Q41, why Q41? Because of this output one. So now, this is structure we got. Now, the next step will convert this melee structure into the Moore structure. Now, if you see here, this is actually representing the melee machine, and this is representing the Moore machine. We have one output column here, but here we have a separate output column for each input the straight. Now how to get this table? This is again very easy. What we will do is we will write this column as it is. So I have written this column as it is. Again this states we will write as it is here in this table. Also this column we will write as it is here. This is for 0 input. This is for input 1. Now, how to get these values? So, how to get these values? Now, here it is Q1. We will start, we will see this first row Q1. Now, here we will go for Q1. This is Q1, Q1 and Q1. If you see here, Q11, Q11, Q11. So, we will write Q1, output is 1 here. Now, the second value is Q20. So, we will go here Q20, we will search this is Q20 only one value and the output value is 0. So for Q20 we will write 0. Now we go for Q21. We will search here Q21. We find this Q21 here and and, and nowhere. So Q21 output is 1. We will write Q21 output is 1. Okay, we will take one more. Uh, let this Q41. Okay, so we will search Q41. So we have Q41 here, we have Q41 here, okay, and we'll see that the output is 1. So Q4 is 1 is 1. So likewise we have designed this table. Now if you see that this is a Moore structure and this is an equivalent melee structure. This this Moore structure is equivalent to the melee structure which is given to us. This melee structure which is given to us. When I say equivalent, the meaning is if I read any string let's say 0 0 0 1 
using this Mure machine or the this given Mille machine. In both the case, the output will be the same. Since we are getting the same output now using either this Mille machine or Mure machine, now we can say these machines are equivalent, but still there one step is required. As you remember that in the Mure machine, it was defined that Mure machine provide the output for an empty string also. If we provide epsilon to the Mure machine, the output will be the output of the starting state. Now to resolve this, what we do is, in this structure, in this given Mure structure, we will add one more row. Let's say we add one more row, Q0, which will same as the Q1. All the states will be same as the Q1, but the output will keep it as 0. And also we will change this starting state from Q1 to Q0. Now this new structure basically is a structure that purely represent the Mure machine. When I say purely represent the Mure machine, now this machine is accepting a epsilon and returning the output that will be the output value of the starting state. So you can see here, this is the equivalent structure of Mille machine given to us. So here we have added one more states. So if any string we, we want to read, let's say 0, 0, 1, 1, if I want to read in this machine, what I will do is, because of the 4 length input, the, the, the length of the string is 4, definitely I will be getting the 5 length output. I will be not considering the first output. Now the this four remaining four values will be matching with the Mille machine. So this is the steps to convert from Mille machine to Mure machine. Now we'll see the steps of converting the Mure machine to a Mille machine. So we'll see, uh, we'll come to the numerical part so that it will be easy to understand. So this is a Mure machine given to us. You can see here we have only one output column. So the need is to convert this machine into a Mille machine. Mille machine we are expecting here one more column for output. We'll remove this and we'll we, we are expecting some values here in spite of here. If we are able to do this, then we are able to convert or transform this Mille, uh, Mure machine to a Mille machine. Now, how to do it? What is the approach? Let us try to understand. So, now see here. If you see in Q0, we have 0 here, right? It's very simple. For the Q0, the output is 0 here. So we will see where are Q0 values here. So we find this is Q0, we will put 0 here. Now, for Q1, we see the output is 1. So now we will search Q1, this is Q1, this is Q1, we will put 1, 1 here. Now we see Q2. Q2 the output is 0, so for Q2 we put 0, we put 0. For Q3 the output is 1, so we put 1, 1 and 1. And this is our Mille machine. I think it's easy, right? So it's very easy steps. So simply the Mille machine is uh, now we have obtained out of the given Mille machine. So you can see easily see here that the structures we have just designed is same here. So this is Q31, Q11, Q20, Q31. 
So if you see here, it's the same thing. So I hope that you have understood the concept of finite automata with the outputs. Now you are able to define the Mirai and Murai machine. Also, I believe you are able to convert or transform the one machine to the other. Okay, so this is uh, for today's lectures. See you in the next lecture.